Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my uh, Azure Stack uh, series that I'm doing. So this is um, a, bit, a bit away from the normal sort of exam topics I've been doing recently. Um, but this is something that I've, I've kind of been looking at since I since I kind of um, found out that there is a, a sandbox version that I can deploy in my demo center. I thought, you know what, I want to do a series around it. I want to document uh, from a video perspective my my journey deploying this in my tenant then deploying Azure services like ABD and Azure Arc and stuff like that. So that's what we've kind of been doing in the demo. I've been deploying it, going through the, the deployment of, of the sandbox in my environment, but then looking at the resources that are applied, um, assigning, you know, deploying some configuration to them as well. Uh, so we're on a new topic today. <clears throat> so um, we, we kind of done the introduction, we did the intro to Azure Stack, and now we're actually going to start looking at um, the next topic. So let's get started with this episode. So this is part one of the introduction to Azure Stack HCI core technologies. Um, so we're going to be covering quite a few pieces in this. Um, with uh, with I mean, there's going to be four, four, three, four core topics. Um, so for this episode specifically, we so this is part one. We are going to talk about what is Hyper V, uh, what is Azure Stack HCI, uh, and then we are going to do go back into demo tenant and start doing some more configuration. So Hyper-V is essentially Microsoft's implementation of uh, Hypervisor. Hyper-V applies the resources of a sort of a single host computer. And it distributes them across sort of multiple VMs running on the same physical hardware. So the Hyper-V provides a sort of isolated space for sort of each VM to run its own OS. Uh, and that's independent to the OS and other OSs as well and other VMs. When you install Hyper-V server role, the, the sort of installation process implements sort of a software layer known as a hypervisor. And the hypervisor controls access to the host physical hardware. The installation process then installs all hardware drivers only on the sort of host operating system, which is also known as the sort of parent partition. And all VMs running on that uh, on, on the host communicate only with the sort of virtualized hardware. So this diagram pretty much shows the different levels. Um, you might have seen this before. You know, if you know Hyper-V, you'll probably know all this. But that sort of um, right at the bottom, we've got like the hardware layer. This is where the processor, with the virtualization extensions are, and your CPU, and that goes up to level two um, or down, probably down to level two. Um, yeah, because we're going level two one, so it'll down to level two, which is your of your, your virtual extensions going to the hypervisor, Hyper-V hypervisor. Then you've got your virtual CPU, and this is where you have your Windows roots uh, OS, which is on level one. And your guest OS as well, which is also on level one. So those are sort of different levels of, of sort of uh, the, the Hyper V does for you. Let's talk a little bit about nested virtualization. So nested virtualization is a, a Hyper V feature that allows you to install and run Hyper V inside the guest VM. Nested virtualization enables a guest VM uh, to be a Hyper, Hyper V host, uh, which can then host other VMs. So it's a VM within a VM almost. This is virtualization can be useful for implementing virtual test and de development environments that would otherwise require sort of physical hardware to run. Um, so you know you can you can you can do. I've done that before quite a bit. You know when I'm kind of testing if I've got like um, like I said a Hyper V environment, uh, I'll use that as a Hyper V server like a host, my VM as a host, and then <clears throat> deploy some VMs within that. So very good for testing and, and development, hundred percent. So this diagram again kind of dissipates um, your Hyper-V with nested virtualization enabled. And this feature allows a guest VM to install its own hypervisor as I mentioned and run its own guest VM. So again, similar at the bottom, they've got the hardware layer where the processor with virtualization extensions are on your CPU. <clears throat> you then have virtualization extensions going um, a bit different now. You have level level zero, which is your hypervisor, Hyper-V hypervisor. And then you've got your vCPU with virtual extensions, which goes into level one which is your Windows root OS and your Hyper-V hypervisor again. And then that virtual CPU then goes up towards your guest OS, which is level two and your Windows root OS. So again, another additional level to what we saw on Hyper-V with, with your sort of being nested. So let's talk about the reasons for using Hyper-V. So you know, Hyper-V spots various scenarios ranging from hosting individual VMs to providing sort of a platform for sort of complex software defined infrastructures. And you can use it to consolidate your server infrastructure. You can use Hyper-V to consolidate multiple physical servers into fewer, you know, more powerful computers to optimize space and energy usage. 
can use it to provide sort of a, a, a virtual development or test environment, as we mentioned, we nested. It's because virtualization provides you with a means to duplicate and restore development and test environments without needing to purchase or maintain physical hardware or isolated uh, network systems. You configure virtualized development and uh, test environments quickly and revert them as needed without sort of affecting production systems, which is very helpful. You can also use Hyper-V to establish a virtual desktop environment or VDI. We're kind of going to be touching on that with the AVD element of it. Combining Hyper-V and remote desktop virtualization provides a centralized desktop management solution that uses um, VDI or virtualized desktop infrastructure. And this scenario really helps you provide users with agile and personalized virtual desktops or virtual desktop pools with enhanced security. So historically on-premises, Hyper-V is what people use for VDI. You can implement, finally, you can implement uh, sort of a private cloud infrastructure with Hyper-V as well. And, it, you know, it accommodates flexible on-demand services that, that function like public and cloud services. Azure Stack HCI exemplifies how Hyper-V can integrate with other, uh, other sort of technologies, such as uh, Storage Space Direct, which we're going to talk about, and SDN to run virtualized workloads on-premises. So we are going to be touching on them later on this this topic as well. <clears throat> Let's talk about some of the Hyper-V features now. So new releases of Windows Server and updates that add features to Hyper-V for supporting you know, different workloads, uh, which increases their performance and enhances their security. Um, so you can kind of group the Hyper-V's general features um, into, into sort of the, the categories that we're seeing um, on the screen now. So first of all, we have management and connectivity. So you can manage your sort of Hyper-V environment with the Windows Admin Center, Hyper-V Manager, Hyper-V Module for Windows PowerShell, and Virtual Machine Connection. You can install these tools on your computer with Hyper-V server role, uh, or you can install the tools on a remote management computer. Then of portability, so to make it easier to move and distribute a VM, Hyper-V provides features such as live migration, storage migration, and standard import-export functionality. We have DR and backup, so disaster recovery and backup, you know, Hyper-V supports Hyper-V replica, which creates copies of VMs uh, in other physical locations. And you can use these copies to restore VM instances as needed. Other features such as production checkpoints and sort of support for for VSS, which is volume shadow copy services, facilitate application consistency backups for your VM states. We then have security. So Hypervisor supports uh, Hyper-V supports security features such as um, Secure Boot and shielded VMs. Secure Boot verifies uh, digital signatures on files during the boot process to help protect against malware. Whereas virtual and virtual disks were in shielded VMs are encrypted to secure access to, um, to those VMs and uh, can only run on specific protected hosts as well. Finally, we have optimization. So for all supported OS, guest OSs, uh, Hyper-V includes a set of customized um, services and drivers called integration services. Uh, these integration services include time synchronization, OS shutdown, data exchange, heartbeat, and guest services. You can obtain updates for integration services through Windows Update as well. So let's move back to the demo tenant now. So demo time finally. So we're going to have a look again at uh, doing some more configuration on the um, HCI box um, and try deploying some different Azure services to it. So let's jump through to the Azure portal. Welcome back. Here we are in the Azure portal. And if you remember um, in the last demo, last episode, we did the template the deployment. Um, and I just wanted to show that the, the you know, what it deploys, so it deployed, um, looks like a resource group potentially there. Um, let's see if I can just extend that a little bit. Yeah, so those are deployment settings. It then did a HCI, a HCI box cluster, which is actually um, an Azure Arc uh, resource there. Then the key vaults, some key vaults there, and the storage account as well. So um, what we actually want to do is we need to go to this H HCI box cluster. Um, and we should get an error, well, not an error, it's like a warning. So your cluster is validated, but it's not deployed yet. Uh, to deploy the cluster, click here. So this is what we're going to do. So you can see here, just quick, quick run here, you've got the Azure Automation, Auto Manage for Windows Server. We'll do that in one of the demos once this is all deployed. So this is what takes about two to three hours, apparently. We've got the Azure Virtual Desktop Setup, the Kubernetes cluster. So I want to go through all these in the demos, um, as well as the Azure Arc sort of setup as well. So um, let's click on here there. So let's just let it, it's going to start looking for all the resources, do validation of all the resources. Let's let it finish that key vault audit login. It tells us what tasks it's completed there. Uh, is it still?
still doing something. A few more seconds, hopefully that should create. It's not starting validation yet, you see. There we go, hopefully it does that now, key will audit login, that's what wasn't on there before. <coughs> that finish hopefully. Once that's finished we should be able to then um, review and create. Taking it sweet time. There we go, everything succeeded perfect. So there we can go review and create. Um I just go through the config there, obviously just auto auto kind of auto deploys. So it's got all these things are already in there. Um look all the other configuration source, the storage connectivity, network pattern, IP addresses, subnet mass, etc. Um, so we should just be able to click create here and then if not already it takes you to you can go on deployments here um, let's refresh so let's just refresh this until it starts that's what I'll show you all the tasks it's going to do because there's a whole long list of them and this is where a couple of times I've tried to deploy it I've got to this stage once and it's failed uh, well it didn't fail it's strange that when I looked at overview, it said this um, Azure connection said failed. But then when I went to deployment, it was just showing as it was trying to do something. It was still on the on the cleanup task somewhere. So it's very strange. Um, but this at that time, I did get random errors with the, the script that ran on, on the HCI box. Um, so I don't know. Let's do a bit of tidying up here. Let's disconnect from that. So I don't really know. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I will wait for this to populate all the other tasks and I'll come back to show you what other tasks it's going to complete. So we'll see you in a second. So it took about five, five, six minutes for this to populate, but what it's doing now is it's deploying as your stack HCI. So it's doing the, the actual HCI system. So it's currently it's just check, it's checked the requirements so that's successful. So now it's validating the environment. It's going to then resolve requirements, it's going to install the OS update, it's going to clean up. So this is where I failed last time I did it. It, it stayed on this for, for hours and hours and probably about 15 hours um, and then it finally failed. So there's clean up post update, evaluate proxy configuration, validate network settings, configure the settings on the servers, adjust the number of infrastructure, VMs, prepare servers. It goes through all these tasks. This is why it takes around two to three hours for this to complete. You can go down and loads of tasks. Um, but once this is done, that's the deployment com complete. We can start actually using the HCI box. Um, and that's where we'll, we'll start actually deploying services to, um, to the HCI box. So very exciting. Um, so obviously I'm not going not gonna to sit and make you watch this for two, three hours. What we'll do is in the next video, um, we'll start off here. I'll show you everything's complete. And then we'll go through to, to do the actual using of the HCI box and, and setting up sort of um, Azure Monitor. We'll start off with Azure Monitor and then we'll have a play with, with that. And then we'll, we'll look at virtual machine management as well through the Azure portal and then do a bit of Azure Kubernetes services as well. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope that's been a, you know, a bit of a shorter um, bit of a shorter demo. But again, just trying to show you the process I'm going through to deploy these services. Um, well, just now, now the kind of hopefully all this goes well. We're actually now getting into the nitty gritty of deploying some of the some of the Azure services, integrating them with HCI Box, and then using them. So a lot of fun to come. Hopefully, you're getting a lot from the theory as well. Um, do drop me a comment with you know with, with any feedback, anything you'd like to see a bit more, any questions you've got. So I'm trying to get a special podcast guest on, so we can have a little bit of a, a bit of Q and A with them. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, so that's it. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, bye.